The Mighty Moa, one of the many exotic symbols of Kiwi pride, was once the only large land animal throughout the diverse biomes that pepper New Zealand. Within a few hundred years of the first human arrival to New Zealand, the moa had gone extinct. After them, the only large land animals were those brought in with humans. Despite their sudden and depressing demise, they have a rather long evolutionary history full of twists and turns. And one of those twists was laid down in the soft sediment of a riverbank many millions of years ago. Come, let's learn about the Kyburn Moa tracks, the oldest in the world. There were nine known species of moa that existed prior to 1445. North Island Giant Moa, South Island Giant Moa, Bush Moa, Eastern Moa, broad billed Moa, Heavy-Footed Moa, Mantel's Moa, Crested Moa, and the Upland Moa. Dozens to hundreds of specimens are known for these species from all sorts of depositional environments, so their anatomy and evolutionary relationships are rather well understood. That being said, their actual physical fossil record isn't particularly great. Molecular analyses suggest that moa are quite old, with their flying ancestors reaching New Zealand around 60 million years ago and diverging into flightless forms no more recently than 6 million years ago. Most of their remains come from the late Pleistocene and the Holocene, with only a few specimens from before this period. The Miocene-aged St. Bathens fauna contains two possible new species of ancient moa, but beyond that, the record is spotty. Well, the bone record anyways. Thanks to special depositional settings, sometimes behavior can become etched into the sands of time. Tracks, trails, burrows, nests, feeding traces like bite marks, coprolites, gastroliths, and regurgitations can all make their mark in sedimentary rock. Traces left over after an animal does a thing. The most interesting of these impressions are those that leave behind unique bits of behavior, like the dinosaur mating dance site in Colorado, dinosaur pea stream frozen in Brazilian flagstone, and much more. The less interesting traces of behavior are the footprints, but even here they can preserve quite some fascinating things, such as an Ice Age human picking up a toddler, a theropod possibly scratching the ground with its hands, and more. Considering the moa were around for so long and must have left their bones in hard, lithified rock layers, it should be no surprise that they left behind stony impressions of their lives too. The very first fossil moa trackways were found in 1866 in the North Island. Plenty other sites have been discovered across the North Island into the 1970s, with five others found in the last two decades. All of these track sites have been dated to between the late Pleistocene and Holocene, the period of time that covers the existence of all nine known moa species. The South Island has not had the same luck in exposing fossil moa trackways, with only a few currently known to science. One set was found in 2019 and the other in 2022. Only the first set has received publication, so why don't we take a gander at it? All the way back in March of 2019, a few months before the world went to chaos, Michael Johnston, a larkal farm in Fela, was trying to cool down from the summer heat by taking a dip in the local river, the Kyburn River, with his dogs. He then proceeded to stumble upon something that looked quite interesting at the edge of the river, just a little way from the State Highway 85 bridge on the Maniatota Plains of Central Otago. Johnston contacted Kane Fury from the local Otago Museum to alert him of what he had found. When Fleury went to go meet Johnston at the river, he used his underwater camera, snorkel, and a mask to dive under the meter-deep river to have a look at the tracks. Fleury saw at least six very clear footprints left in the rock and knew he had an internationally important specimen on his hands. By May of 2019, the Otago Museum had organized an excursion to save the fossils. 
They hypothesized that the footprints had been revealed by flooding that had occurred in the area since November of 2018. The researchers noted that Johnson had coincidentally stumbled upon the specimen at the cosmically perfect time, right before they would be eroded away and right after the rock directly above them had eroded away. In order to even see the fossils, the various teams involved had to bring in some heavy equipment to divert the river around the prints. Once that was done, researchers took a bunch of photos, measurements, and made an orthographic image of the site. This was done first as they had to cut the prints out of the tan, silty, claystone ledge. The river would have to be returned to normal and construction work was to occur in the area. Once everything was sawed out, packaged, and sent to the museum, this is what they got. Six footprints going in one direction, with a seventh crossing over and perpendicular to the trackway. The footprints that make up the majority of the trackway average about 46.3 millimeters, 1.82 inches deep, 272 to 300 millimeters, 10.7 to 11.8 inches wide, and 194 to 260 millimeters, 7.6 to 10.2 inches long. But of course, it's not the size that counts, but how you use it. And in this case, the critter that used its fat feet to make the trackway was a moa. This is one of those cases where no one can state with 100% certainty exactly the animal that made the footprints, but there is a near mathematical impossibility that whatever made the prints was anything other than a moa. The moa was going in a north to northeast direction when it plopped its fat feet in the mud. The trackway goes for about 2 meters or 6.56 feet and the feet are close enough together for the whole trackway to measure around 0.4 meters, 1.3 feet in width. Moa were definitely wide gauge striders, but maybe not as comparatively wide stanced as other theropod dinosaurs of the same size or larger. There is a seventh print that is a part of the same bedding plane as the trackway, but is clearly made by a different individual as it was left in a south to east direction. This print was bigger than the rest at 284 millimeters or 11.2 inches long and 448 millimeters or 17.6 inches wide. The footprints were described in a 2024 publication in the Journal of the Royal Society of New Zealand by Kane Fleury, Emma Burns, Marcus Richards, Kevin Norton, Stephen Reed, Rachel Wesley, Richard Ewan Fordyce, and Klaus Wilken. Thanks to the preservation conditions of the fossils, the author team was able to estimate the size of the type of moa that made the prints, which helped them get an idea of how quickly it was moving and even narrow down a moa family and maybe even a genus that made the prints. For the trackway, the authors found the moa that made them was most likely traveling at an average of 2.61 kilometers per hour, was around 109 centimeters or 43 inches tall at the hip, and was between 62.53 and 118.24 kilograms or 137 and 260 pounds in weight. For the moa that made the giant singular print, the authors estimate it may have been 158 kilograms or 349 pounds in weight. No speed nor hip height can be estimated since it's just a single print. I think it would be prudent to touch on the time at which the prints were laid down, since that would be the best way to cross-reference against known species to get an idea of what types of moa may have left these prints. Before attempting to saw the prints out of the river, the researchers did some recon of the rocks in the surrounding area to get an idea as to what geologic formation the prints were laid down in, and what other formations were above and below it. This allowed them a good cross-reference for general time frame to use against whatever data they collect from the rocks that house the footprints directly. The prints were preserved in the Maniototo conglomerate, which has previously been dated to between the end of the Pliocene epoch and start of the Pleistocene. The team then took samples of the sediment from the rock layers above the track bed, dissolved all mineral material except for the quartz, then dissolved the quartz and extracted aluminum-26 and beryllium-9 from that, and then sent the samples through an accelerator mass spectrometer. This collects radiation data that tells you half-lives and how long the sediment had been buried and lithified for. The test shot out dates of between 3.57 and 1.9 million years, 
though the 1.9 is the most recent possible cap. The mode is 2.9 million, meaning the time is more likely to be skewed towards the 3.57 to 2.9 million year period. This makes the whole thing date to the Waipipian to Mangapanian stages of the late Pliocene. This makes these prints the oldest trackways yet known of MOA and the second oldest remains of any MOA. The St. Bathans MOA remains are still the oldest. So what does this all mean for what type of MOA left the prints? Going from size, stride, and the age of the primary trackway, the authors think the most likely candidate was a member of the Emiidae family of MOA and possibly an ancient species of the Pachyornis genus. The singular secondary print, they hypothesize, may have belonged to the Dinornithidae family and possibly a female of the Dinornis genus, since females were remarkably larger than males. The presence of these tracks in 3 million year old South Island rocks proves that the MOA reached their immense sizes quite early on in their evolution. Though there is no evidence of the diversity of forms that must have evolved in New Zealand after the flighted common ancestor landed there 60 million years ago, they almost certainly would have done so. The 19 to 16 million year old St. Bathans material also suggests large flightless forms of MOA similar to the ones from hundreds of years ago. Also indicating these critters were quick to succumb to island gigantism in the face of a giant island full of some of the best resources in the world. The fossil footprints continue to prove that ancient New Zealand was a world in which birds ruled. Too bad the area where the footprints were found has since been essentially destroyed for a drainage ditch. No rock outcrop exists there anymore. Gotta protect them wild spaces and paleontological resources, man. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.